Halo guys, hari ini saya ada di Pantai Frederesia karena mau bantu-bantu sebuah event yang bernama Offshore Wind for Kids. Di sini kita mau ngajarin anak-anak untuk membikin atau membangun offshore wind turbine sekaligus untuk mengedukasi mereka tentang uh, perubahan iklim, kemudian energi terbarukan atau renewable energy, khususnya wind energy atau energi yang dihasilkan dari angin. Kita mulai dengan background kenapa kita harus menggunakan energi angin untuk menghasilkan tenaga listrik. Alasan paling utamanya adalah karena perubahan iklim. Pada umumnya, listrik dihasilkan dengan membakar bahan bakar fosil seperti minyak bumi, batu bara, dan gas alam. Proses ini menghasilkan emisi karbon yang tinggi, mengakibatkan pemanasan global, di mana suhu bumi akan meningkat dan akan banyak bencana alam seperti kekeringan, banjir, dan lainnya. Salah satu solusi untuk menghentikan pemanasan global adalah dengan menggunakan energi terbarukan. Dinamakan energi terbarukan karena energi ini berasal dari bahan-bahan yang tidak habis karena terbentuk dari proses yang terus-menerus. Seperti energi angin, sinar matahari, panas bumi, dan lain-lain. Bagaimana turbin angin bekerja? Turbin angin menghasilkan energi listrik dari energi kinetik yang terkandung di dalam angin. Angin akan menggerakkan rotor yang rotor ini akan meneruskan energi gerak dari angin ke generator yang akan mengkonversikan energi gerak menjadi energi listrik ada dua jenis pembangkit listrik tenaga angin ditinjau dari letaknya yang pertama atau yang paling umum adalah pembangkit listrik tenaga angin onshore atau yang berada di daratan di Indonesia setahu saya ada dua pembangkit listrik tenaga angin seperti ini yaitu PLTP Sidrap dan PLTP Tolo di Sulawesi Selatan yang kedua adalah jenis pembangkit listrik tenaga angin yang terletak di offshore atau di tengah laut. Kenapa harus diletakkan di tengah laut? Karena biasanya di laut itu kualitas anginnya lebih bagus terkait dengan kecepatan dan konsistensinya. Namun biaya untuk pembangunnya lebih mahal dan teknologi ini masih dalam tahap awal pengembangannya. Uh, tetapi dengan riset yang terus dilakukan diharapkan teknologi ini akan menjadi semakin kompetitif di masa depan. Alasan diadakan event Offshore Wind for Kids ini adalah untuk mengenalkan anak-anak kepada bidang engineering, teknologi, dan juga renewable energy, khususnya energi angin lepas pantai. Di event ini, anak-anak diajari tentang bagaimana cara merangkai fondasi turbin angin, mulai dari yang paling sederhana sampai fondasi mengapung. Diharapkan anak-anak termasuk anak-anak perempuan terinspirasi untuk menjadi engineer di masa depan. Sebelum di Denmark, kegiatan ini sudah dilakukan di negara-negara lain seperti di Belgia dan di Belanda. Saya juga sempat ngobrol-ngobrol dengan pencetus kegiatan ini, uh, William, tentang motivasinya, kemudian tentang fokusnya mengenalkan bidang engineering ke anak-anak perempuan, dan juga tentang masa depan teknologi offshore wind energy. Thanks for your time for being my YouTube video. No problem at all. <laughs> So before we talk about uh, this event, could you tell me more about your background? I mean, your education and how did you end up having a career in uh, offshore wind or wind energy in general? Yeah, so I studied civil engineering at the KU Leuven in Belgium. Yeah, but um, you're originally from Belgium, right? I'm originally from Belgium, yeah. exactly. Uh, and I was at the time very interested in geotechnics. Um, And that led me to pursue a, an Erasmus at the TU Delft in the Netherlands. Okay. And over there, there was this course uh, that I had on uh, support structures for offshore wind turbines. Mm -hmm. 
um, so I started doing this and then I did my master thesis project on uh, monopile foundations for offshore wind okay. um, and then one of my promoters for my master thesis suggested that I would do my PhD at the University of Oxford for a project uh, that was going on called the PISA project. Mm -hmm. uh, and so I applied for it. I never thought I would get accepted to Oxford, but uh, I got in and we were working on this PISA project to renew the design guidance for monopile foundations. All right. And so that's how I got into all of the offshore wind stuff. And so since then I've been working in the industry uh, for offshore wind. I'm currently working for Jan de Nul, which is one of the big contractors in off offshore wind. Okay. How did you get the motivation or what is your uh, inspiration to have this, uh, this event to be held? In Belgium, for my birthday, I got a wind turbine. Uh, the, my parents always ask me, what do you want for your birthday? And this yeah. year I got a wind turbine. And as I was playing around with it, um, I wanted to build the first floating wind turbine in Belgium. Mm -hmm. And so I first tested it in Brussels, and then in February there was a really nice day on the beach, and I tested it at the sea. And so I, I created the first floating wind turbine there. Okay. And so as, as I was doing it, a lot of people started approaching me, <laughs> asked me if I also did it for kids. Yeah. And so that's really where the idea came from. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, so then I launched this Buy Me a Coffee page, an uh, online support uh, platform, and a lot of people started supporting me. Uh, oh, and it's so like they make a donation or yeah, something, right? Yeah. That's how it started. Uh, and yeah. So because there was so much support, uh, we started organizing demo days in Belgium. Uh -huh. Uh, but we also saw a lot of interest to do it abroad, like in Denmark, in Germany, the yeah. Netherlands, the UK. Okay. But eventually I'll, I also want to do something more permanent, uh, setting up hubs in the different countries mm -hmm. so that we can organize more demo days in the future. Okay. In your website, uh, I also see that uh, the aim is to promote the engineering major to the girls. Yes. Uh, did you see any problem? So I actually work in a team uh, where it's quite balanced. And so we have uh, eight, uh, we're a team of eight and we have three female engineers. Mm -hmm. So that's relatively balanced. Um, but I know that also from doing my engineering studies, uh, actually there were about 17% uh, women in uh, doing engineering. And so that's, uh, that's something I think needs to be tackled at a young age uh, to really make a change. And so when I started this project, I thought it was really important to also encourage a lot of girls to do it. And so that's why you can see the logo. It's a, it's a girl with a hard hat on oh, to yeah. symbolize uh, yeah. a girl studying engineering. Yeah, I just realized it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, and so one of our aims is to teach as many girls as boys about offshore wind. We have a lot of engineering challenges to come uh, with climate change. Uh, there's a lot of technical solutions that we'll have to figure out. Mm -hmm. And so we're going to need a lot of engineers. Mm -hmm. and we, need, we need to get a lot of like, new bright minds to come up with uh, new and innovative approaches to tackle mm -hmm. and the problems of tomorrow. Yeah. So we need the young generation to continue the yeah. The holders with the renewable energy. So. The climate change is not something that's going to be fixed yeah. uh, in the next five years. Yeah. We'll need a long-term solution. Yeah. Um, and we will need people in the future working on it as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So related to that, uh, what is your take on the offshore wind itself? Like I know that now it has a higher price or higher LCOE compared to another renewable resources, right? Like a solar or onshore wind. So we see prices going down quite quickly. Mm -hmm. um, but when you choose a certain technology, it's not only about price. Mm -hmm. uh, there are so many more things that come into play. Uh, like the NIMBY effect, not in my backyard, is a really important one. Uh, and it's one of the reasons why a lot of offshore wind is also being installed. Yeah. Um, when we talk about renewable energy sources we also need to think a little about the balancing of the grid and you cannot go for one solution alone yeah, because then you will need to get a lot of uh, yeah 
battery energy storage solutions as well. Um, so we, we will need to focus on multiple different technologies, that's for sure. And I think offshore wind will be part of the solution. One of the reasons is uh, the price is actually going down quite rapidly. Uh, the NIMBY effect is an, is an important one. Uh, yeah. A lot of cities are near the sea, so that's also a big advantage. Yeah. And yeah, so offshore wind, for, offshore wind will play a role, uh, but it won't be the only solution. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's also for sure. Yeah. Okay. And yeah, I think that's all my question. And thank you very much again. Okay. No problem. Thank you for having me. Yeah. Bye. 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 Bye.